Hey folks, it's Ash from Being Swanglish and it's Friday. That means it's time for Fact Fredo. And this is quite a, a relevant one because we are approaching a big event in Sweden, which is called Midsummers. And you've no doubt heard of this big, big event. It's pretty much known in most of Europe, I suppose now, Midsummer in Sweden, largely because of a horror film that apparently was quite terrible that came out a few months ago. In fact, sorry, it was last year, actually. What is it? It has special properties. <laughs> Um, I think my mother saw it and said it was terrible, but generally whenever my mother says a film is terrible, I love it. <laughs> we will see. I don't know why you invited us. I've not seen it yet. But basically, Swedish Midsummer is a big event for Swedes. It involves lots of singing, tons of singing, in fact. In fact, there's even a weird song about a frog, which I can't remember the words to it, but it's quite a bizarre one. And also lots of drinking, of course. The Swedes love their shots and they love their aquavits and they love their snaps. And there'll be lots of singing interspersed with drinking shots like that. Now, the bit I didn't understand is that you're not actually meant to down the whole thing. So whenever I've gone to a Midsummer's event, I'm normally the one that ends up pretty paralytic and hung over. But that's because none of the Swedes told me that you're just meant to take a shot. And then some of the lyrics to the songs are that you have to take the whole thing, ta 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 de hella, something like that. Anyway, so it's normally held on a Friday after the summer solstice, and the idea of it is to recognise the beginning of Sweden's massive summer holidays, which generally consists of about five weeks, where generally you just don't get a lot done because everybody's off work and everyone's taking up and using up all of their summer holiday. Is that not just the worst name for a shop that you could possibly call it? The athlete's foot. Who names a shop after a disease of the foot? Bizarre. It's a little bit like calling a sports shop broken leg. And it's at this time of year as well that there's not a lot of darkness. In fact, in some parts of northern Sweden, it doesn't get dark at all. And in fact, where I am in the south of Sweden, it got light this morning at about 4.30 a.m and last night it didn't actually get dark until about 11. So if you are living here, you definitely need blackout blinds because otherwise your room will be very bright and you won't get a lot of sleep. By the way, it is lunchtime here and I'm just wandering through a supermarket in Sweden at the moment. You can see that it's pretty empty here, not a lot of people around and most people um, are kind of just chilling and getting on with life, ready for midsummer, doing their shopping before the big party celebrations start. So you might be wondering, well, what do they actually do in midsummer apart from singing and dancing? Well, they normally have a big midsummer maypole, which is a big flower color covered green thing that they put in the middle of a big field normally. And midsummer celebrations are not held in cities. They're normally held in the middle of a field in the countryside, somewhere like that. And the pole is said to represent fertility. So there are myths and theories that Midsummer also mark the start of fertility. Fertility. Although others argue that actually there's no explicit connection between the two and that actually that's just a bit of a, a theory with actually no foundation to it. But it is basically a big party and it's one that everybody looks forward to. It also coincides with the graduation of students and when they're all also partying. And so it's kind of this month is really just party month in Sweden, coupled with some amazing weather. Now, as I mentioned, it is normally held in the middle of a field or in the countryside or in the middle of nowhere. And therefore, what you'll also find is that during midsummer, the cities are just empty. The streets are empty of people, of cars. Quite spooky, really. Now, there is also another very strange tradition, but I've never seen or heard of any Swede actually doing this, whereby during midsummer, men and women pick flowers, seven different species of flowers, and put them under their pillow because legend has it that their future spouse will appear in a dream <laughs> due, to, <laughs> due to putting flowers under their pillow. Now, I'm not quite sure that I understand the basis for that, and it is only a myth or a legend, another one. And as I say, I've never known a Swede do that. But if you do, or if you know of anyone who does, comment below because I'd certainly be interested to hear. 
So then there's the food. What do Swedes eat during midsummer? Well, it's a bit of a mix. It's typical Swedish food, really. So a lot of potatoes, pickled herrings, which come out of all sort of jars and weird flavors and everything. Strawberries and pretty much anything that they can palate washed down by, of course, aquavit. And aquavit is the shot I mentioned earlier. Even just saying that word gives me shivers and nightmares because it's pretty strong stuff. You'll also find a lot of Swedes even make their own, brew their own, which is pretty impressive. That means you never quite know what flavors you're gonna be served at a midsummer's party. Then there's a the question of what do they wear? Well, I've not seen anybody really dressing up, but at these midsummer events, you will get the hardcore midsummer goers who will wear their regional traditional dress for midsummers. Each region has its own kind of dress and outfit. In Smallland, apparently, the women wear white lace blouses and ankle length skirts, whilst men wear blue vests and elk skin pants. Sounds like some random, weird, random movie, doesn't it? Then there's the dancing. Well, they do have some weird traditions in terms of dancing. And I actually have witnessed these. Lots of dancing, lots of singing around the pole. One of them is the Little Frogs song where people dance around and jump like little frogs pretending to hop like amphibians. And if you've never been to one, just get ready to just let go and have an open mind and do some crazy random dancing because that's the spirit of midsummer and you have to really get into it. So that's really a summary of midsummer in Sweden. If you've never been to a midsummer event, it's in a few weeks. So definitely book something up and get yourself to one with friends and family because you're guaranteed to have an absolutely brilliant time. And as I say, unwind, relax. Don't worry about what people think because everybody's doing the same crazy dancing as you will be, the same crazy singing and probably drinking a lot of aquavit. So don't drive, take a taxi. Hopefully you found this useful anyway. Comment on the video below if you love Midsummers, if you've been to one or what you're planning to do in a few weeks. And of course, hit that subscribe button below. Thanks very much for watching.